chirping from the pine. It's time to rage. Another fucking episode of Chirping from the Pine. So insecure. <laughs> <laughs> I just I keep I shout I keep shouting out fucking Lincoln Park lyrics. Yeah, because uh, I hate Lincoln Park. <laughs> so what what do I do with a band that I fucking hate? I sing all their goddamn yep. songs. And now that now they live in your head rent free forever. Yeah, unfortunately. But apparently, well, well, the Dodgers are living rent free in the Mets' heads forever now after this fucking series, probably. Yeah, I mean, there's like some. Uh, Self-loathing, uh, blaming all the Dodgers players and all that jazz as it comes with sports <clears> that <throat> it's everybody else's fault but your own. Yeah, and- that's, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, and we're going to get to that when we talk today about playoff baseball and just baseball in general. My name's Josh. It's good buddy Adam right here alongside me. The one-two the- punch, the fucking oh, yeah, leadoff hitter. You know, the leadoff and the cleanup. Yeah. Fucking taking shit down. We're, we're about to hit a Shohei Otani leadoff fucking home run to start this game. But before we do that, you can go to Game Rage Magazine on YouTube where you can hear all of our shit. And you can, you know, like, comment, and subscribe. That that would be great. Additionally, you can go to Instagram and TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. Twitter slash X Game Rage Mag. If you like music, you can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official. On Instagram and check out the All Gas No Trash podcast where we talk about musical things. If you like anime and manga, you can go uh, check out the Anime Syndicate podcast where you can listen to our good buddy Frank say all of his wonderful things about anime. Dragon Ball Daima. And you can hear me talk about how much I hate everything and, you know, stuff and sometimes like think that things are cool. Uh, that's uh, anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast on Instagram and you can uh, check out Anime Syndicate. All right, that's it. Let's talk about baseball now playoffs yeah first of all i would just like to just say <laughs> you, you remember when we used to do that thing where we'd be like super sarcastic oh first of all i just like to congratulate you <laughs> but it's like you mean it in the most hateful way yeah i would like to do that now adam i would just like to congratulate you on having the dodgers win the world series this year and hope they haven't won shit dude i know that's why i'm doing it <laughs> i'm jinxing it um <laughs> so i think that the Dodgers are going to win this series. There's there's no... I thought that this was going to be kind of not closer, but this was going to be <clears throat> maybe trading back and forth games for the most part. Uh, after those first couple games, it was like, oh man, it was like eight... It was like eight nothing fucking Dodgers. And then it was like... Uh, what was game two? It was like... I think it was the opposite. It was like the opposite. End. It was like it was like it was like seven seven to one fucking Mets. And it was fucking tit for tat. <clears throat> like yeah, it, I mean it was. That's kind of been the story for the National League that the Padres, when they faced the Dodgers, it was everybody was exchanging one game for another, blowouts, but no real close games. Yeah, and mm. uh, this series hasn't been any different, and. I'm slightly, I don't want to say I'm slightly depressed because, I mean, you want exciting baseball. And we got that last night with Cleveland winning in extra innings over the New York Yankees with, uh, I forgot that guy's name. His name's Fry, but he ended up hitting the two run dinger that put them over the top to put the series at two to one. Everybody's losing their goddamn minds, but at the same token, they're still down a fucking game. Uh, well, that and and again, that game was exciting. And I will say, on the American League side, the games have been a lot closer. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been <clears throat> the victories have been they haven't been close. Like they haven't been one run games, but they've been closer than these past uh, met the, the National League series. Uh, I mean, listen, game one was nine zip Dodgers. Game two, seven three Mets. Game three, eight fucking nothing Dodgers. 
Game four, 10-2 Dodgers. I mean, these are blowouts. These are fucking ass whoopings. Yeah. Uh, whereas on the other side of things, uh, you know, game one was 5-2 Yankees. Game two was 6-3 Yankees. Game three was 7-5 fucking Guardians. So arms reach. Yeah, it's doable. That Those deficits are overcomable. Now, granted, like... It was tied 5-5 last game going into whatever the 10th inning or whatever it was that they uh, walked off or whatever. But, I mean, but then you get a walk-off. So, like, that's, okay, cool. That's just how it ended. But, I mean, that was a close game. Went to extra innings. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to get that in a Dodgers-Yankees World Series or even a Dodgers-Guardians World Series. Oh, man. I think they're just going to be blowout games. I think that's what we're going to get. I mean, I don't think that. Oh, man. Well, if you if you had a chance to see the small sample of the series that happened in June between the Dodgers and Yankees, that shit was off the chain. Uh, it was back and forth between both teams uh, switching score leads. Yeah. And I, I, if it ends up being the case that we get Dodgers Yankees, I mean, fuck, man, you can't ask for a fucking better. World Series than that. Oh. Whether you're uh, 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 an adamant Dodger hater or Yankee hater, this is what baseball fucking needed. This, I mean, dude, there are graphics, infographics talking about how this National League series is the most viewed since 2009 or 2006. And the NLDS series is like the one of the most viewed ever. Uh, and it's it's obviously because of Shohei Otani, and it might be even somewhat contributing with... It might even be Sh- Yoshinobu Yamamoto contributing slightly because it just kind of opens themselves up to international markets and shit. But, dude, I, I think baseball is, like, fucking back where it needs to be. And sure, it's never going to be in the same realm as fucking, uh, I guess, football. But, man... It's, it feels like, at the very least, it's inching upwards because baseball has opened itself up to so many different markets across the world that anytime somebody comes from Korea, the Dominican Republic, Mexico, it's like you're inviting the world to the fucking game. And when they come to the major leagues, it just has everybody invested. And I think that only is going to be further escalated with the World Baseball Classic and now that... Uh, baseball is going to be reintegrated into the Olympics and the fact that I think the Czech Republic, if I'm not mistaken, w- had one pitcher for a country that has little to no experience in baseball to st- have a guy uh, on the Czech Republic throw out or rather strike out Shohei Otani. I'm sure those guys are like fucking inching again to to get to that world stage at the World Baseball Classic to prove That they can be one of the better teams, even with like the lack of experience or the the number of years that the U.S. have had the chance to perfect their experience in baseball or whatever, even for the Japanese. Yeah. And I'll say this as someone who is an avid Dodger and Yankee hater, I mean, like die hard, hate both of those fucking teams. A Dodgers Yankees World Series is what is best for baseball. It's best for business. All right. That's exactly what it is. You've got the two largest fucking markets. L.A. East, and New York. East and West Coast. You got both coasts. This is this this is going to put baseball back in the fucking saddle, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, you, don't, you don't get that with a Dodgers-Cleveland. You don't get that with a Mets-Cleveland. You don't really even get that with Mets-Yankees. No, a Subway Series would be dog shit. That would be dog shit. You get that with Dodgers-Yankees. And... Now that I have really no dog in the fight other than what's best for business, I advocate for Dodger Yankees World Series. That's what I think should it should be. I think that'll be an exciting fucking series to watch. I mean, I, I'm actually kind of like excited to see that. Not that I give a shit about either of those teams. I just like watching good, good baseball. Good baseball, yeah. And and that's what I'm most interested in. So, you know, and granted, yes, listen, I, <laughs> I have a connection with Shohei, right? I mean we went to the first game that he got his first home run at, you know, as much as I hate the guy, I still want to see him fucking, it's still going to be cool to see him win a world series. It's must be baseball. It hurts because it's not with the angels, but I'm still kind of happy for the guy. It's must see baseball, dude. It is. It is. It's must see baseball. And it's, 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 I don't, I don't need it. You need it. Scripted. 
I don't know if it's scripted. It sure seems like it. it I don't know if it's scripted because I made a comment that I personally believe that uh, it, it it's to the benefit of baseball if the fucking Dodgers reach the World Series at this point, right? Yeah. Because anything would not anything else would not suffice. <laughs> the ratings for any other World Series combination. It's just not going to work, dude. No, Nobody's going to give a fuck if the Cleveland Guardians make it. Yeah. I mean, assholes in Cleveland give a fuck about the Guardians. No one else in the country. Yeah, sure. There's there's fans of every team throughout the whole country. There's no fucking team that has more fucking asshole fans than the goddamn New York Yankees. All right? Though there's motherfuckers everywhere. I see fucking New York Yankee hats in non-fucking playoff times. Okay, in not even baseball season, assholes are wearing Yankee hats. Same thing with Dodger hats. I'm sure in other places of the country, I don't fucking see anyone wearing Cleveland Guardian shit outside of baseball season in fucking L.A. Yeah, or anywhere else, right? Southern California, whatever. New York Yankee shit. That these are the premier fucking markets for the team. Yeah, it's like any team that has social capital or any cultural icon influence. Uh, and maybe Houston has some of that now uh, for the last seven years or perhaps even decade yeah. that they've garnered enough hate from the baseball world about the 2017 World <laughs> Series. Yeah. And and in spite of the fact of how you feel about that specific topic, uh, they were fortunate enough to win a World Series within the last two or three years. Yeah. So they shut a lot of people up and... I think a lot of people would be interested to see the Houston Astros, whether they fucking like them or not, if they think they're cheaters or not. A lot of people would tune in just to fucking see them lose. And yeah. they're one of those teams now that people are willing to watch to fucking see them, to see their downfall. Yeah, it's peak heel fucking energy. This is, this is, you now have a landscape in baseball that has excellent storytelling potential. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Even, the, I mean, listen, let's be honest. This World Series, uh, you are going to have, if it's if it does turn out to be Dodgers-Yankees, I mean, you are going to have, I mean, listen, there's a lot of people that hate the Yankees. The Yankees are going into this as basically the heel team, but their fans are so rabid for a World Series win because it's been, what, 15 years since they've won a World uh, Series? 2009, yeah. Yeah, so it's been 15 years. Um, and they've spent a shit ton of money and haven't been able to get back. Yeah. And their fans want it. Their fans are clamoring for it. Most of the rest of the baseball world still hates the Yankees from when they went on that epic run that they did in the late 90s. fucking or 27 World Series or whatever the number is. Yeah, well, the, that late 90s to early, two, like mid-2000s, they, they were on a fucking tear. They had Derek Jeter. You had fucking all these assholes. A-Rod, you had all these fucking guys that they were like the patriots of fucking baseball at that time. Yeah. And now this the landscape has now shifted to the Dodgers have been that. The, the Yankees fell off for the last 15 years. The Dodgers did, have never been on an epic run, which they are. This is the genesis of this is potentially the genesis of that. If the Yankees pull it off and fucking defeat them, man, this sets up a great storytelling time for fucking next year because the Dodgers are the baby face in this thing. Everyone wants to see the baby face chase the fucking heel, right? I think for storytelling, I think the Dodgers, if this shit's scripted, I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to put this on the record. If this shit turns out to be true, baseball is scripted. If the Yan if it goes Dodgers-Yankees and the Yankees win the World Series this year, if it goes seven games and they win the World Series, baseball is scripted because then next year we're going to get the rematch and everyone wants to see the baby face chase because that draws heat, that draws money. This is going to set that up. So now this year will be banging probably the highest world series views they've had in fucking who knows a decade maybe longer and then next year they're gonna do double that because everybody wants to see the baby face get the payoff and then that's when the dodgers will win the world series i don't know if the if dodgers it's scripted. Are, i don't know if the dodgers are face <laughs> in this situation because i think people or for the people that care about baseball i, I don't think they see they see the dodgers like the face solely for the fact that they're the fifth largest payroll. They have fucking Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, which are three all-stars in their own right. Yeah, but those uh, are good guys. Those are like good ambassadors of baseball, right? 
the Yankees have that tainted history of being that team that everybody hates. No one has been colloquially, except for me, I'm the only motherfucker who's hated the Dodgers probably, right? But no one hates the Dodgers because they've never been a threat. To, or they, not, not that I shouldn't say they've never been a threat, but they've never gone on a run, right? Like at least in the last 30 years, right? The Yankees did that. The Patriots will be forever hated by most fucking football fans because of the run that they went on over the last 20 years. Yeah. The Yankees will be forever hated by most baseball fans, because, at least now, because of that run they went on in the late 90s, the early 2000s. Um, there really hasn't been an MLB team other than the Astros. Again, there's a lot of people that are going to hate the Astros. Not that they went on an insane, epic, like, run. They did, somewhat. A little I mean, bit. Not, it was not, like not, half. It was like a half a run, maybe. It wasn't that they won World Series. It was the it, way they did it. It was just that they were consistently good, and they reached the World Series. A bunch and, of times, right. Yeah, they, and and that was in short order of, like, you know, the last seven to ten years. And that they built enough cachet or yeah. social capital and hate. Right, it's uh, the same thing with the Lakers. There's a ton of in the Bull, the Chicago Bulls. Tons of people are fucking bull haters because of the fact that they went on epic epic run. Now there's a lot of assholes that are bull fans because of that. The same thing with the Lakers. There's a like a ton of people hate the fucking Lakers. Every other state in the country hates the Lakers, with the exception of people in Southern California, because that's like the home. That's our team, right? Mm. So because of that epic run that they went on, everyone fucking hates them. And it's like the Cowboys. There's a lot of people that it's been, it's been too long. I think now the hate for the Cowboys is starting to dwindle because it's been so long since they've been relevant in the NFL. But there was that period during the 90s where they were fucking the shit team. They were it. They were the fucking guys that were doing all this shit. And that's how you got all these assholes with these major uh, in major markets that are just diehard Cowboy fans because of that. And that's one of the things that's crazy is like out here I've met way more people who are Dallas Cowboy fans. Yeah, that shit's wild. And I have, out of, out of, I think I've met like five people who are Patriot fans along with me. For some reason, that thing didn't translate. Like the, the, the Patriots, like that thing, they developed, I feel like, more haters than they did growing of fans, right? And, which was weird. Because the Yankees, like all these teams that did all this shit, you, you see their shit everywhere. I don't see a lot of Patriots shit out here or, or really anywhere else other than like people in New England. Yeah, there are contingents of fans. That's, that's I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but it's not to the level of like people throughout the country, like being Cowboys fans, being fucking Yankee fans, all, all that kind of shit, you know? So, but again, storytelling wise, the Dodgers are the face in this scenario between them and the Yankees. The Yankees still have that hate. They still have that that there's a deep seated hate amongst millennial fucking baseball fans, <laughs> millennial and older, because of that run that they went on. I think this is rock and fucking Stone Cold. I think this is yeah. 50 50. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's rock and Hogan. Tweener, too. tweener, tweener. Yeah, sure. Very tweener, could tweener be. versus twe- tweener versus tweener. Yeah, but either way, it's excellent storytelling. Oh, yeah, it is. And this is going to be fucking amazing. Yeah. So I can't wait. We we may have to fucking do a a game, game. We may have to do episodes for the World Series, mm-hmm. just just talking about Game One and every single game. We may we may have to do that for this when they when they pop up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as far as the Dodgers go, man, I, I I hate to say it, but I had something of a blind faith for the fact that they would get this far. Because I was t- I was telling you before we even did this podcast that I believe that they were due for this run simply for the fact since the all-star break that their bullpen had been stretched to the limits yeah that they were put in every fucking scenario that guys were being put in spot spot starts uh guys were put in long relief and this was coupled with the fact that they had something of a makeshift starting rotation because guys were going down every five seconds and Mm -hmm. all this shit so i was of the opinion like internally that because they had done dress rehearsal for the last 90 games uh, of the season or the second half of the season and having to stay in front of the San Diego Padres who ended up being three games behind them in the last week of the season to, to basically have the last week of the regular season be playoff baseball for the Dodgers that they were, uh, 
weathering these hard times to be in a situation to play in the NLCS. And yeah, I mean, the Dodgers have been lucky in getting uh, somebody they got in the uh, MLB trade deadline, Jack Flaherty for, from the uh, Detroit Tigers to go seven innings. That's one starter that has only, that's gone beyond uh, six plus innings. Uh, whereas their other starters have only gone four or five innings. So it's not like guys are going fucking deep for them. The bullpen has to, the bullpen has had to come in and finish the job and finish out the last five innings of the, and that's been like every fucking game. And I'm like, dude, they've been doing that for 90 fucking games. No wonder they're fucking in the, in the situation that they're in, that they've been lights out, that they have four shutout games in the last six games. Like that's, that's fucking nuts. That hasn't been done since like, I don't even remember what the record was. It's like the fucking Giants from the 1930s or 1950s or whatever the fuck it was. But uh, uh, I think they're going to end up closing out this series today, have it a wrap, have it wrap up, and then we see what happens with Cleveland and New York. Maybe fucking Cleveland starts to get hot with this win, especially coming off a, a walk-off win. You don't know how that'll change the chemistry of a fucking matchup. That shit's... I mean that that could probably light a fucking uh, a light of fire under the <clears throat> Cleveland Guardians' asses, and it could. Um, and it, it, I feel like it's going to go seven. I feel like it's going to go seven. I feel the opposite. I feel like this is it. This is this is this will be the end. The, the Yankees will close this out now. Uh, this this will have pissed them off, mm-hmm. and now the, the, this is three games to one. Mm-hmm. Or no, it's two to one. Wait, what is it two to one? It's two to one, yeah. Yeah, so th- they're gonna they're gonna win, they're they're gonna take the next two games. This, this is gonna be it. They're they're gonna be pissed and they're gonna be like, "Fuck you guys." Yeah, we, we should have we should be three and zero. We should be gonna be wrapping this up tonight. Yeah. Now we're mad, and I, I, that'd be cr- that. I do think it may be, it it might be telling, if they blow them out like six one seven seven two something Stomp like that. Stomp them out. Stomp them out, and then that's gonna just crush the will of the Guardians, and then it's over. I will say, man, I'd like it that, to go that, seven. That'd be cool. I will say that the name, the Guardians, uh, especially what they're about uh, in relation to the city of Cleveland. Yeah, the gar—they're not gargoyles, but the things that are at the, the top of the towers of their yeah. their uh, their tallest buildings. I'm like, that's kind of cool. Uh, I, I've grown to like it. I still miss Chief Wahoo on the fucking hat, but th- this was like a worthy fucking second place or follow up to. Chief Wahoo, but I, I definitely do miss Chief Wahoo. Um, I, there is two other topics. One is just going to be brushed over real quickly. Uh, actually, no, this is this might turn into a full thing. Uh, one, the playoffs for Nippon Professional Baseball are going on right now. So we have uh, the SoftBank Hawks facing off against the Oh shit! I, I think it's the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters uh, in the climax series. So it's like the NLCS for the Pacific League, and then the Central. I don't know who's in the Central, but uh, I was telling you that I had no idea like how their playoff format worked, and I thought this shit was really cool. Um, so there's only two leagues. There's only two leagues in uh, Nippon Professional Baseball, right? Mm-hmm. So the top three seeds go, and the two lowest seeds play each other. And when they go into what is equivalent to the ALCS or the NLCS for us, uh, the top seed has a one game advantage over the uh, whoever their opponent is. I thought that was really cool because it, it I think it eliminates the chance of an underdog potentially winning. And it it makes it makes the regular season meaningful. And it it, it for me. When it comes to Major League Baseball and having wild cards, man, how many fucking times have we seen in the last 10 years where the hottest team in the playoffs is some fucking 84 and 74 team, whatever their record is, there's like barely above 500 baseball team that just goes on a run and yeah. they ultimately win. And it didn't even matter that the top seeded team got the top seed, got the buy or anything like that, and they end up losing the series. And the wild card team ends up winning the fucking uh, ends up winning the World Series. This to me, I think, should be implemented in Major League Baseball, where the top seed ends up getting a one game advantage, and you end up playing a six game series, 
and the underdog has to make up that difference to ultimately win. That shit's kind of cool because then it even proves that the underdog team really earned their fucking due in beating the top seed. So what, what do you got to say about that? Yeah, no, I agree with that. I, I think uh, I think that is pretty fucking cool. But I do think that it more often than not, I mean, like right now, the the higher seeded team. I mean, both of those teams are the higher seed, higher seeded teams in the NP in each league or whatever. And I mean, they shut out the fucking they they the three and three and zero or whatever against the fucking two or four and zero or whatever the one the one series is over. But it's yeah, it's it like it's it it's it's that one zero deficit is almost fucking insurmountable. It seems like, uh, yeah, sure. I think it's cool to see the teams like that's your home field advantage basically is you get the one game already off the gate but it is kind of cool to take both teams and say all right we're starting at nothing we're we're starting at scratch both of you guys have the same level of opportunity to potentially do something and potentially win and i think that's how you get these wild card teams that come in and upset people um and i don't think you would get that as often if you had a 1-0 advantage to the team that had the higher seed or whatever or what have you. Yeah. But, I mean, it is a cool concept. I think it works for, for them. I don't know if it could be applied and work as well for the MLB. I think it would fucking just basically all the teams that are the, the better teams, they're just going to end up winning at, at the gate. I mean, sure, something crazy could happen. But if you're one of those wild card teams and you get that first game upset and you go up one zip, man, you're, you're, you're in business now, man. You're cooking because even if you drop the next game, you're 1-1. Fuck you go you win the next game, you're up two one. Like, you know, you can still maintain that that lead. Whereas if you have to overcome a one nothing deficit from the gate, that's already fucking, you know, that's proving proving bad, I guess. Yeah. So I don't know. It is a cool concept. Like I said, I think it, it works for them. I don't know if it works in the MLB. Cool concept nonetheless, though. <clears throat> Maybe there's other sports we could apply that to here. Maybe uh that would make soccer more interesting. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But <clears throat> um all right, last anyway, thing. What's that? Yeah, what do you got? Uh, so there is information that there is another two-way player in high school that is potentially going to be drafted as the number one pick for Nippon Professional Baseball. Uh, and this guy is under the tutelage of the same person, the same manager that developed Shohei Otani into the two-way player that he is within Major League Baseball currently. Uh, the baseball player's name is Ray Rayo Shibata, going to be the number one draft pick in Nippon Professional Baseball, a two-way player. Um, do you believe that this is going to be a... Tr- an un- Are, is this a flashpoint for baseball that we will have more two-way players not just here not just in japan but in the u.s that we will see more of that or is it just a a wrinkle in time that this you know a small speck of dust in the ongoing continuum of baseball that this will just be for a decade or so or maybe even 15 years that uh a two-way player is going to be a thing I think we're going to see the the shit change a little bit. I I still don't know if that's good yet, but what's going to end up happening is is generally when you get to college, that's when if you're a pitcher, you, you're told to pick a lane. You either need to learn how to play a position. If you can hit better, then you can pitch. You're going to become a position. You're going to become an outfielder. You're going to become some, uh, some kind of a positional player, right? Generally... Hitting is valued as a, at a higher rate than pitching in in most terms. I think that that's that's an accurate assessment because I do think the art of hitting is much more difficult than than the art of pitching. I think that 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 skill required to hit the baseball and do it consistently is much more difficult than just throwing. All right, so that's why I think if you can hit. It doesn't matter if you're good defensively or not. That's what they have outfield positions for. Most people can catch a fucking fly ball, right? Uh, if you can't hit, or or you can play fucking first base, generally. You can develop that skill. But if you can hit, they will find a place for you. And that was one of the things, like, when I played, 
That's why I focused so much on, on becoming a better hitter because it almost didn't matter what I did defensively because, again, if I can just put up the, the likelihood, there's nine assholes out on the field, right? Or eight assholes that the ball could technically be hit to. The likelihood of it getting hit to you is one in eight, right? So, But the likelihood of you're going to get three or four at-bats a game, that's high. You're going to get those at-bats. So even if some guy sucks ass defensively, it almost doesn't matter if he can hit. Um, so that's why like, I focused on, on, on hitting as the primary function because every team I ever played on, the, only, the reason I was even drafted or picked to be on teams was because I could hit. So even though I played on a bunch of teams where like the coach's kid was a catcher or whatever, right? I always started, not, never at catcher because you're never going to beat out the coach's kid, right? But because I could hit, they found a place for me. And that was when I learned how to play third base, basically. And so I think that going into college, if you're a pitcher, that's when you get told, all right, you got to pick. You got to pick one or the other. You can either pitch or you, if, you're, if you're better at hitting. And most people choose that based on what they think is going to be more likely that they will get drafted into professional baseball. That's where they make that choice. Okay, do I have a higher likelihood of getting drafted as a pitcher or do I have a higher likelihood of getting drafted because of my hitting ability and now I need to learn how to play a position, right? So that's where the divergence happens. Now that you've got Shohei being essentially the face of fucking baseball right now um, and, and proving that there's money in being a two-way player, I think you're going to see a departure from people starting to choose and you're going to get more people in college. Again, Japan has been ahead of the curve because Japan obviously fostered this. They, they said, oh, you know what? Why not? This guy can hit and he can pitch. Let's let him do both and see what happens, right? Now you're getting another guy that's going to be this two-way player. Right now, high school, if you're, a, if you're a pitcher, you're also hitting. So now they're going to no longer... I think when you get to college, we're going to start seeing guys that can also that can hit. They're going to kind of be like, okay, let's let this go. Let's let this uh, let's let this guy cook. Let's let him still pitch and hit. You're not going to get that with every player, right? Because hitting is harder. But you're going to start seeing, I think, in the next five years, maybe ten. That's when you're going to start seeing the, the the shift slowly happen. We're going to see a lot more pitchers that can hit. Because in college, they're not going to delete their hitting ability anymore. They're not going to say, okay, you're no longer focusing on batting practice. Like, that's mm-hmm. what happens. Once you become a pitcher, you don't fucking do batting practice ever again. You're never going to fucking hit. You just fucking, you know, that's what we got a DH for. So why even practice it? You're just solely focused on pitching. That's going to fucking, that's going to disappear. Or not disappear, but it's going to be put to the back burner. And then in, in, in the MLB, we're going to start seeing a lot more teams that have these huge depths of fucking roster for their, for in terms of like pitching, because your bullpens are going to get a lot bigger because what you're going to do is you're going to have guys again, because hitting is valued. So if you've got guys that can consistently hit, then cool. You can rotate those dudes around. It's in terms of your DH position and hell, there's nothing that says you can't play multiple positions. So, you're going to get these teams where you've got guys that are like, you know, these pitchers that can, okay, they can throw if you need them to, but shit, we like the way they can hit. So let's throw them at fucking left field. <laughs> and then you're going to have like your left fielder coming in to fucking do long relief or whatever. Dude, I and re- then what you said you hate about like everybody's only pitching like two or three innings, that's going to get even shorter. People will be, it will likely, in my opinion, when we get to that point, and maybe it's going to be 10 or maybe 15 years. Baseball will change to the point where now you're going to be having one guy throw to a batter and then he's going to be removed and then you're going to have some dude throw to another batter and then removed and then maybe you'll let a guy finish out the inning and then maybe you'll have a guy do one, maybe two innings at the most. Your guys who are your core pitching staff, they're going to get one to two innings a game and then after that you're going to be having so many guys that can kind of, that are trained to pitch because there's going to be this influx of these guys and then you're going to have that kind of situation happen, I think. I mean, it's already kind of happens. Like, uh, Dodgers are probably one of the most uh, forefront people that do. Oh, yeah. Ma- well, I mean, I think every team does it, but probably more so the Dodgers, where, I mean, just in the playoffs alone, if they don't want their starter to go another round against the top of their order, fuck it, we'll, pour, we'll pull him out. We'll put in another relief. Uh, they haven't seen left-handed pitching. Let's go yeah. and put in this guy. Exactly. Uh, 
based on the numbers that we have. Um, and shit, I mean, I don't remember exactly if next year they're going to be implementing a rule which kind of curbs your point about uh, starters, but I think maybe next year they're having starters go five deep regardless of how shitty or well they... What's the rule that they're going to possibly implement? That was it. The starter has to pitch five innings? Has to pitch five innings. There's no way that's going to fucking fly. There's no way the owners are going to let that happen. I don't remember... uh, Yeah, so... If that ends up happening... um, Well, fuck, at least... Because that's bad for everybody, in my opinion. Why do you say that? Because then if you've got guys that are in your... Because right now, they're start most starting rotations are not built to have guys go five fucking innings. <laughs> they're pulling them after three, maybe even four at the most. So, I don't know. I, I, think, that, I think that'll be bad. I don't know if that'll be... <laughs> I Listen, I would like to see guys develop and become like that. If you're a starter, you should be going minimum five six. fucking innings. It's six? That's the bare minimum. I mean, I think you should really be hitting six or seven. And then that's where you've got your... And listen, if you get into a jam and you got to get pulled after five, everybody fucks up, that happens. That's why you've got long middle relief. you got the you got your middle relievers that can come in and throw two, maybe three innings, and then you've got your closer who's coming in and throwing the last inning, right? Um, that's, that's, what I, that's what I think pitching staff should go back. I think they need to go back to that format. But that's not what they're set up for right now. So, yeah, if there's a rule change that makes them change that, I don't know if that'll be good because I don't think that... I'm, listen, I'm just saying, I, I think these guys are pussies now. I, I don't think these fuckers are going to be able to, to, to put up with that. Dude, the only person that I've seen... Can, like, it's, it's <laughs> Maybe I haven't watched enough baseball on other teams or enough baseball on other teams, but Paul Skeens, the guy, the... Mm, yeah, uh, who, who probably is going to end up being the rookie of the year uh, for the Pittsburgh Pirates, dude. That's the only guy that was actively watching that went. Dude, he went. He would go fucking deep, like, yeah, because he. That's how well he fucking pitched. Yeah, and I'm like, shit, man. Where, where the fuck is where? Where is everybody that's going six plus innings? That's a starting pitcher, especially in the playoffs, man. Like, it's such a rarity to see guys go. Five, six innings. Well, a lot of that I think has to do with the pitch counts. A lot of them are not allowed to go more than sixty-five, maybe seventy-five pitches, and then that's when they fucking pull them out. Nobody's doing ninety or hundred plus pitches really anymore. And in this format, where they're not really letting guys go over seventy-five pitches, let's just say, let's if you look at a six-inning run, okay, that's basically what twelve fucking pitches an inning. So you're throwing. To three batters an inning, if you, and then you got to be good though. That's the thing. You got to you got to throw only three pitches to a guy or three to three to four pitches to a dude to get to that point. So you know if you're looking at that from that aspect of pitch count, that's why these dudes are getting in trouble and they're fucking oh shit. Well, it's been three innings and you've thrown seventy five pitches already. Oh, let's fucking get them out of there. So guys aren't doing that anymore where they're throwing they're going three and out or whatever or they're throwing you know six pitches an inning because they're getting a dude to bite. And fucking ground out or some shit one to two pitches into the at bat. I think part of it is that players or pitchers are overexerting themselves, trying to be one of those guys that is that are throwing over a hundred because that's just kind of the thing now that everybody's just throwing gas. Your Greg Maddox's don't exist really anymore. Yeah, the crafty, the crafty motherfuckers. You you have a, a strategic way in which you throw, and you have an overwhelming command of what the ball does. That's not that's not really prevalent anymore in baseball. Uh, everybody's just trying to throw, like you said, everybody's trying to throw 101, 102, and just throw heat. And yeah, that'll be good for a minute, but man, you can always turn up the dial on the pitching machine, and if you take enough reps, eventually it doesn't mean anything anymore. If you take enough reps on the pitching machine at 100 fucking miles an hour, or shit, you just start having guys turn up to 105. I don't know what the max is on pitching machines, but like they're know. gonna start making pitching machines that can throw 110. Yeah. And then you got dudes that can hit 110, 120. Your gas ain't gonna matter anymore. Yeah. Cause you do it enough times and you just get used to it. You know what I'm saying? I also think it's like the health of the players uh, that for the slightest thing, for the slightest thing, whether, I mean, whether they're, it's actual damage to their arm or if it's their legs or whatever that might yeah. be, uh, if they get hit in the leg by a ball, Oh, let's go MRI or whatever. We got to do an MRI. Oh, I don't know. He's just he's got severe bruising on his fucking <laughs> leg. Well, he'll be out for six 14, to, 14 six days. To eight business weeks. Yeah, two two weeks. 
it's like, fuck, man. Motherfuckers would be pitching, like, on three or four days rest back in the day. Dude. And going deep. Wade Boggs would drink a fucking goddamn, like, two fucking 36 cases of beer on the flight to the fucking game. <laughs> and then he'd go play the game, all right? Mm-hmm. Like... Daryl Strawberry would fuck hookers and do, do meth <laughs> and fucking literally go play the game. Like they don't build dudes like that anymore, man. This is why we need to legalize drugs in fucking baseball. Like that's that's what it needs, man. You need to legalize steroids and you need to legalize fucking hard drugs. Hard drugs, yeah. And then you got some dude who's messed out on a bender pitching. That dude can throw nine fucking you, innings. It was ironic about you talking about fucking guys that are just gonna end up playing like every goddamn position and pitching. Yeah. Uh, is like, man, they might as well just implement fucking bringing back um, the National League rules. Yeah, where everybody hits. That's what'll end up happening. But they, but see, then that's the thing is they, they want to double dip. They want to have the guy be pitcher, and then they want to have another one of the pitchers be the fucking DH. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, that's what'll happen. So you're not gonna have like your Albert Pujols is again. Look at what happened. Pujols is sucks dicks defensively, but he he was a star and played everywhere because a motherfucker could hit, right? They'll find a place for you if you can hit. And hell, if you can also pitch at the same time, well, hell, you got fucking double, you're double fucking valuable to them. Yeah. And that's what people are going to, that's what the dads, all those Instagram dads that their kids have fucking, <laughs> yeah. every single one those of them right dick. now has now pivoted. And they're now like, son, if they weren't a pitcher, you need to learn, you're going to learn how to pitch now. And if they, if they were a pitcher, son, we're going to focus on your hitting too and get that going. Because now everybody wants to be the next fucking show. Hey, that's going to be their ticket to get in. So that's that's what's happening right now. Yeah. All right, cool. Good episode. Man, that was a long one. Anyways, necessary, though. If you want to listen to more of our shit, you can go to YouTube, Game Rage Magazine. Also, like, comment, and subscribe there. But stay tuned because in the, in the coming months, now that baseball season or winter ball season is going to be ending, probably at, like, the beginning of December, we are going to go to the park. I am going to buy a wood bat, two wood bats. I'm going to buy the same exact wood bat twice. I'm going to have one that's uncorked, and we're going to homemade cork a bat. <laughs> and I just, I, I've i never fucking used a corked bat in, like, a, a, an experiment like this. I have used one one time, but I don't know. I don't, it was so long ago. I don't remember what the, I don't really remember about it. So I just want to see what the actual fucking difference is by using a corked bat and see if we get any fucking difference in fucking power or whatever. So stay tuned for that experimental chirping from the pine video on YouTube that'll be coming out soon so or well in the next couple months but anyways uh, you can also go to Instagram and TikTok Game Rage Magazine Twitter slash X Game Rage Mag you follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram and you follow good buddy Frank at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast alright uh, that does it for us uh, get ready for the next one was chirping from the pine the game rage sports podcast you can follow us on instagram and tiktok at game rage magazine follow us on x at game rage mag you can go to our website www.gameragemagazine.com